Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Near Automata. We are here in the Forest Kingdom so that we can collect some tree bark so that Pascal can fabricate a filtration system for A2. This is going to require a slight trek through the forest uh, up to a very particular location guarded by a buttload uh, of these knights. Now, we can probably go past a bunch of these, but they might actually follow us all the way to the tree uh, and make life much, much harder for us. So, we're just going to deal with them the best way A2 knows how, with a lot of really, really sick dash teleports uh, and violence. Jesus Christ, Dark Mirage is so good. Oh, I've really been robbing myself of a lot of easy AoE cleanup and just pleasure of watching that move work uh, by not using it too much in this playthrough. That was that move was a godsend in the original Nier and it's dare I say even better in this one. I think the two best spells in uh, Nier from from Grimoire Vice were the the spear and that the that variant of Dark Mirage. That spear was really ridiculous, though. Uh, plus, Lice had its uh, its little auto fire function, just like the Gatling on the turrets or on the pods. Oh, I just wanted to give myself a little time to activate the level 2 blade. What makes the blade even better is if you have that combat heal, the deadly heal thing. Wait, is deadly heal when you're low on life? I don't know. Uh, the life leech. Even that is leeching life, and it hits so rapidly that it's just, you can see your health constantly refilling if you're even near an enemy. It's great. Oh, what are you doing, Goliath biped? What's up, my man? Oh, you... Oh, he doesn't want none. No, he doesn't want none. Oh, that's... Gotta watch that, though. Finally, he's somewhere where I can at least lay into him. <laughs> he does... It's pathing does not know. It doesn't know if he's very afraid or just very confused. He landed up on this! <laughs> Okay. Yeah, they totally were close enough to the tree bark that they would have followed me. Uh, now where is that? There we go. Rigid tree bark is the specific we'll item we needed. So now we're going to go back to Pascal's village. We're going to present it to Pascal. And we are going to get our MacGuffin. Which is going to set a lot of other events into motion. Okay, we're cool. No mooses with phantom hitboxes are coming after me for mysterious reasons. So, uh, I would say that we are in much better shape than the last time we teleported to Pascal's village. <laughs> oh no, that was 9S teleporting to the, uh, Forest Kingdom. A lot of... Hmm... We reviewed the tapes. That was, I can confirm, that was nonsense. <laughs> After thorough tape review, uh, yeah, I call a foul on that moose. Here's your stuff. Uh, thank you so much. I'll make a filter right away. Please just give me one moment. I love it. Fly. You knew he could fly. You saw him do it before the first time you rescued Pascal. The machine life for Pascal has returned. Cool, we got it. Thanks, Pascal. That's A2's very awkward way of saying thank you for your generosity. 
so there is a ferocious machine attacking the children down in the play area on the ground level of Pascal's village. So we are honor bound, obliged to deal with this raging machine animal. Vanquish the bad bot. Oh, it's a very bad bot it is. What if he just cursed the other Gundren rock seeker to sound weird in German? That is exactly what he did. He is a bad boy. He's a very bad boy with many sinister magics. <laughs> oh no, Brian. I landed on Brian. Oh, Jesus. I love the Adventure Zone so much. That doggo bot was no Blade Wolf. Uh, let's go talk to Pascal again. And now, we can call it even, can't we? I did defeat the nasty creature. Oh wait, no, this... I shouldn't be getting rewarded. This was a, a quid pro quo, uh, quo thing. This is coming up again. When they surrender their weapons, they lost the ability to defend themselves. Remember what Pascal was saying when we uh, gave Pascal the old world knowledge of nuclear fission and nuclear bombs? If something bad were to happen to the village and Pascal didn't use that knowledge to defend them because he's a pacifist, would they all blame him for the calamity? So that's coming up again. Oh, but Pascal is such a bro that we have even converted cynical, rough around the edges, chip on her, uh, on her shoulder, A2, to kind of coming around to him. Great. Children can stand strong against senseless conflicts. But one of the kids is suffering from a faulty storage unit. Oh no! Found deep within the abandoned factory. Yeah, we'll agree to help Pascal out. And the children. The children of the future. This is another side quest. And this, I believe, continues the main story once we, you know, get a distance away from Pascal and come over to the kids here. Or, no, 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 no. This is just a, an event that always plays once you get close to these guys. This is adorable. I don't... Mm, I love this. I don't care what you say. This is genuinely cute. It's boring right now. Go buy us something from the tool shop. Uh, and this is yet more side quest material. Uh, the person that we want to talk to to continue the story is that bot on the right up ahead. Uh, before we do that, let's go see what's up at the tool shop. Maybe gather a couple more side quests up. Play equipment for the children. Uh, the tool shop machine does not have such equipment. But maybe it can build something if we gather some materials. So A2 reluctantly acquiesces to that request. Uh, and we're off to the amusement park if we so choose to go on with that side quest. Probably not going to do that one, but just in case. Ah, that's one of Jean-Paul's devotees. Let's... How do I get up to you to talk to you? Do I just jump onto the pla... Yep. <laughs> that was easy. Really respect Pascal. It's done a lot for this village of outcasts. We're going to learn more about what Pascal has done for this village in due time. But in the meantime, this machine just wants to show Pascal how appreciated he is around here. So, as a gift, he wants to get Pascal a new philosophy book. Can you guess what that philosophy book is going to be for Pascal? Anyway, uh, there's one we can borrow from an enemy back in the resistance camp, so that's where we're headed. And while we're back in the resistance camp, we're going to take... Uh, probably a pretty lengthy diversion to uh, do a couple of side quests for the twins, Debla and Popola. 
Uh, there's a, it's a, a chain of side quests for them, actually. It's Popola's Errand, Devola's Errand, and uh, the Twins' Request, or the Twins' Request. The Twins'. Uh, we're going to do all three of those, and then it's going to lead to an extremely lengthy series of text boxes. So if you're down for hearing me narrate an audiobook uh, for the remainder of the episode after we do a little bit of running around for these two, cool. Have at it. <laughs> but I'm not kidding. It's like 35 to 40 minutes of just text on the screen. <laughs> um, there are a couple of like in-game novels like that. There was uh, that bit after we fought uh, Simone in Route B as 9S, and we got her backstory that way. Uh, there was all of the stuff that was kind of broken up with hacking sections That's in the labyrinth those twins as 9S. You know, where we got the, uh, probably one of the more iconic lines, you want to blank her, don't you? You're thinking about how much you want to blank her. Uh, there's another one of those coming up for this, for the end of this side quest, and then there's one that I think we get as part of the story later on that also involves Devola and Popola. And for the most part, the very first uh, quest that you do for these two, uh, all you're really finding out is that they get stuck with a lot of the really shitty grunt work around here. And part of the reason for that is because they are deeply distrusted. Or rather, their models are. So they're kind of stuck with a lot of this really dangerous work and this less than glorious work uh, to as atonement almost to make up for the fact that their models back in the day kind of went berserk even though I still think Devil and Popola are kind of in the right with safeguarding the Gestalt project back in near but that's a whole other thing uh, right now we're heading out to the desert so that we can grab some uh, desert flowers uh, I actually forgot about this, so I spent like 10 minutes inside the arena that we fought uh, Adam for the first time in. This is actually where That's you pop out of Time to head back. after the stage starts collapsing after the Adam fight. Uh, it's this kind of flowing river of sand out here uh, where you find the five desert roses to bring back to Debola and Popola. And we are back. So this is the only quest that you're likely to have to go out of your way to go and gather the materials for the twins. Uh, Publa's errand, Devila's errand, and the twins' request. I don't get it. Why are the twins being stuck with all these crap jobs? Hypothesis. Continued crap jobs will eventually have a deleterious effect on the entire organization. I'd better talk to the lady in charge about this. Right, the first and the third quest for the twins, uh, you're likely to already have the materials you need uh, ready to hand in as soon as you pick the quest up. Okay, so before we get more information for the twins, Anemone is giving us our main quest item, the philosophy book for Pascal, and you're giving this gold ore as well. Oh yeah, 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 sure. Look at that. Pensees, or Thoughts, which is a book written by... Pascal. <laughs> In hindsight, you should have seen that coming. You really should have. <laughs> now we can inquire about Devil and Popola. It must seem unfair that they keep getting such difficult errands. But that's going to continue because the people around the camp and the people, uh, I guess, of York. Hmm? Well, no, this is mostly pre Yorha uh, in the Resistance camp. They haven't really forgiven the Devil and Popola models. But that's the completion point for Popola's errand. Now we can get the final leg of this quest chain, which will wind up giving us a boatload of backstory, not on the twins, but for Anemone. Yeah, 
Yeah, A2 cuts to the heart of it. This is what makes her kind of great for these exposition heavy scenes. Is because she won't let characters talk in circles. <laughs> She'll just get right into it. But we will help him out. Alright, what do you need me to kill? Oh, they need tree sap. Cool. Luckily, again, we have a ton of tree sap already because we have spent copious amounts of time in the Forest Kingdom. Am I gonna find that? Search already performed. Regions rich in tree sap marked on map. Well, aren't you a helpful little box? Hmm. <laughs> be enough sap. Time to head back. Yeah, we did the spin in circles maneuver to gather the tree sap. Devil is drunk. <laughs> In the time when we were spinning around in circles, Devila got blackout drunk and passed out. Not easy being a defective model. I don't think they were that defective! I mean, it does suck how they tried to kill Emil and Kaine and Nier and uh, uh, Weiss and all that. But they... Hmm, I do think they were kinda in the right. If memory serves, Nier did kind of ruin everything. The Shadow Lord did nothing wrong. <laughs> oh no, not the return of the Mew Mew Shoes from Yakuza. Every time the twins take a step forward, you're going to hear piercing cat meows. I cannot believe I was tricked into doing that side quest. So that's it for the twins' request. We will get more information about them later. Uh, a lot of it's going to be backstory on Nier and exactly what went wrong there. In case you're confused about that. Uh, I did explain a little bit about that in an earlier episode. And you're going to get a bunch of exposition about that in the future. So in the meantime, let's go back to Anemone. You've changed number two. So these two have a history. A history which, ooh, I'm nothing compared to Rose. Rose Quartz. These two have a history that we are about to learn about in excruciating detail. If you're ready for the audiobook, or if you're not ready, now is the time to bail. <laughs> Your hop, Pearl Harbor, Descent, Personal Record, Part 1 of 3, by the way. My name is an enemy, and I lead the android resistance. Notice she didn't say Yorha. This is a record of the battles I've experienced and my losses. I leave it here as a warning to myself. The machine life form attack lands far too close for comfort. At least they have awesome backing music. I smell an acrid odor and know that some of my hair has been singed off. An enemy, retreat for now. That's an order. That's my captain, Rose. I obey her without hesitation, running from the front. As soon as I take out a few nearby enemies. Feet flying beneath me, I leap into the hastily built trench where my resistance comrades are gathered. How many battles is this now? The same sights and sounds the shame struggle of attrition. My resistance forces play the same war on repeat, with no end in sight. I don't even remember why we're fighting, but I must continue regardless. I must continue until one side or the other is dead. This looks bad, Xion. What should we do? Calm down, Lily. We'll find an opening somewhere. Thinking about how I don't actually know if I'm saying Xion right. I'm assuming it's a kind of flower because everyone else is, but I've never heard of it. Eh, I might be on culture. You don't search for an opening, you make one. Dahlia, wait, I grab Dahlia's arm before she can flee the trench and turn to road. She brought us here after all. She must have a plan of some kind. But as the enemy horde closes in, Rose simply squints off in the distance. 
There's been a change in enemy movements, she says, finally. Someone just started fighting over there. But that's not possible, stammers Margaret. Oh, they're not all flowers, I think. <laughs> We're all here. We're all here. Margaret's right. There are only nine of us left capable of fighting the machines. Captain Rose... Gerbra? Lily, Sonia, Erica, Margaret, Shion, Dahlia, and me, Anemone. Anemone. They say Anemone? We're all that's left of the Eighth Descent Forces. So yeah, not even close to all flowers, I think. <laughs> An uneasy Sonia pulls Shion close and chews on a loose strand of hair. I don't like it, she says. What if it's some kind of machine trap? I wait for a while, heart pounding, until I hear the enemy fire lessen. Okay, I say. This looks like our chance. Let's pull back. Someone's fighting out there, an enemy. We can't abandon them. Oh, so you want to risk all of our lives for some stranger? Come on, we don't even know if this myster this mystery fighter is on our side or not. That's not what I said. Enough, you two. Bark Xion. The captain makes the final decision on this. After Xion speaks, all of us turn to Captain Rose. She looks us in the eyes and nods slowly before starting to speak. Gerbera. <laughs> the enemy's heading towards the explosives we set up earlier, yeah? Gerber thinks for a moment. Now that you mention it, yeah, they are. A slight smile crosses Rose's face, yet she still seems perfectly composed. Good. Then if this goes well, we might be able to take them all out. I want all of you to leave this trench and get to those explosives. We'll let the blast take out most of them. Then we can clean up the stragglers. Identifying our unknown mystery fighters can wait until we're done. No one objects to the captain's decision. The moment she issues the order, we all leap from the trench as one and re-enter the fray. When we reach the battle, we find what appears to be another set of androids dressed in strange black outfits. Before they even know what's happening, we detonate the explosives, kill the remaining machines, and turn our guns in their direction. All right, I say to the strangers. Start talking. Easy, says one of the mystery androids. We're on your side. We're new models rolled out as part of something called Project Yorha. Really? I say. We haven't heard anything about new models. I probably speak with more bluster than necessary, but I have to make sure they're actually on our side. I don't think they're lying necessarily, but I can't read their expressions. Thanks to the giant goggles they wear. And frankly, a little caution never goes amiss in the middle of a war. We learn that the four androids refer to each other as number two, number four, number sixteen, and number 21. They also aren't in a hurry to share much more. Our mission is top secret, one of them says. That's why you haven't heard about us yet. I slowly draw my knife in an attempt to gauge their reaction. So in other words, no one will know any better if I kill you right now. Stand down, Anemone, says Rose softly. No, cries Lily. She's right. 
We've all seen how quickly the enemy is evolving. Who's to say these four aren't machines that just look human? My companion's not in agreement. This damn war has made us all suspicious. One of the strangers, number 16, I believe, draws a long knife from its sheath. If it's a fight you want, she says, I'm happy to give it to you. Before I can respond, Dahlia leaps in front of me with her weapon at the ready. This is it. We're going to fight. But just before the battle can erupt, an android called number two steps forward. Wait, she says. There used to be 16 of us, says number two. But the others died during the descent. We're isolated and alone out here. Reinforcements aren't coming. And that means we have to finish this mission with the soldiers we have. We don't need more enemies right now. What we need is allies. She finishes this speech with a soft sigh, as if trying and failing to hold her emotions in check. I know that sort of voice. It's the voice of someone who still has hope, despite all the odds. That is the end of part one, out of three. Let's check in on part two. This information, I believe, uh, comes from the Nier Automata prequel stage play about Yorha. According to the Yorha team, there's an enemy server beneath Mount Kala. If we can take it out, we might finally gain some ground in this endless war. But in order for that to happen, we need to work together. After a bit of thought, Rose decides to throw in with the new models. It's a relationship that changes as time goes on. Uh, what are you doing, Dahlia? Just showing this idiot how weak she is, replies a winded Dahlia. Oh, whoops. <laughs> we is our opponent, number 16. You're obviously outmatched. The two of them are taking turns hitting each other. It seems friendly enough, as those things go. Plus, they've been doing it for so long now that both of them are out of energy. They likely couldn't punch through a piece of paper at this point. The rest of the group stares at the combatants and tries not to grin. Dahlia and number 16 seem to butt heads over the smallest little things. Maybe it's because they're so much alike. It's almost annoying how quickly muscle heads learn to like one another. The rest of us converse as Dahlia and 16 continue to spar. We call each other by names that I gave us, explains Rose. I see, response number four. I thought it strange that you didn't use code numbers. She nods while she speaks, as though this all makes perfect sense. Suddenly, Captain Rose breaks out into a wide grin. You know what? She says. I think we should give all of you names as well. Like nines. No, says number two. It would be a waste. Rose eyes her warily. A uh, waste? You can name me when the mission is over, she replies, as a blush rises in her cheeks. I could tell her words also served as a wish for success. All right, responds Rose. I'll think of a name for you by then. She know She knows... This is a fleeting promise, as most such things are. As most such things are? But it doesn't matter. 
Already, I can see us growing closer to the Yorha team. Well, my friends are well, my friends are growing closer to them at least. You're all being careless, I state, much louder than I intend. Luckily, the others either don't hear, don't hear, or decide to ignore it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not about to go against the captain's judgment, but that doesn't mean I'm ready to just lie down and trust our new friends. Ours is a solitary existence that has long since been abandoned by the moon. No matter how they cried, mourned, or struggled, the voices of our departed comrades went unanswered. So how can you trust an entire squad of new models that you just met? What's wrong, Anemone? I hear Lily calling to me. She's likely concerned about me being apart from the rest of their group. Nothing, I begin. I'm fu- Before I can f complete my thought. Lily suddenly opens her mouth and emits a terrible scream. Ah. <laughs> Lily's scream echoes throughout the entire camp. It's heartbreaking. It's agony. It's horrible. She's infected, screams Rose. Lily's infected. We all draw weapons out of instinct as much as anything else, pointing them at our comrade as she continues to scream and scream and scream. We all know what's happening. We've seen it before. It's a logic virus, a machine weapon that hijacks the android systems and overwrites their code, their data. And since there's no known cure, it's also a death sentence. I need to show her mercy. I need to set her free. My finger rests on the trigger, yet I hesitate. And before I can make that final, fateful decision, I hear a voice rise up from somewhere behind me. Stop! You can't do this! You can't just let your friend die! It's number 21. The girl I thought to be cool and composed. Beyond all measure. She was now pleading with me to spare Lily's life. What do I do? What the hell do I do? Lily said you were like a family to her. You can't abandon family, not before you exhaust every possible option. What can you do then? I'll use my power to erase the virus. That's impossible. Rose spat out what we were all thinking. But before we can act, Lily starts to send nearby comrades flying with impossible strength. I've seen infected androids before. I know how much damage they can do. Once the virus turns off their limiters, they'll fight and fight until they're utterly destroyed. Dahlia and number 16 rush into the fray, trying to suppress their former friend, but she swats them away like flies. How many of us have been infected? How many of us have been infected now? How many friends have I been forced to put down? The heart I'm not supposed to have aches with the thought. It aches as I remember all of the identification numbers that have been retired. When did I start giving them names? When did I decide I simply couldn't endure it any longer? Initiating reprogramming sequence. That voice, number 21? She's screaming something about reprogramming. I don't know what to do. I'm lost. As my vision slowly clears, I see number 21 inputting commands into her terminal. While number, 20, while number 2 and number 4 hold her down, they hold her as she writhes and 
Rose stares at me with surprise. Oh no. I'm holding Lily too. Fourteenth Machine War, Pearl Harbor Descent. The name of the mission entrusted to the Yorha soldiers. Was there ever such furious gunfire, such bombings that continued without pause? Our target is the machine server under Mount Kaala, and our situation is dire. We need reinforcement, requesting deployment at once. Number two speaks quickly and calmly, which is all the more remarkable considering the circumstances, the hostile army closing in on our position. But the command center in the orbiting satellite informs us no reinforcements will be forthcoming. We are abandoned. We are alone. It's so easy to do from up there. From the satellite, from the moon. I'll do whatever is necessary, says Lily, with a grim smile. Dahlia and Margaret quickly not in agreement, as does number 16. They decided to join the, re the rear guard, staying behind to be our shield, even though it comes at the cost of their own lives. Regardless, they all agreed without hesitation, for we in the vanguard would be joining them in death soon enough. Without another word, we turn our backs on each other and take up positions. We know this is the end. Dahlia and the others will buy us time to reach the gate at Kala's Peak. Beyond that lies an elevator, and beyond that is the server. If we can destroy it, we'll deal a devastating blow to machine life forms throughout the, pa the Pacific region. But. As I notice number 21 scowling at the elevator, I start to have a bad feeling about the final stage of our mission. Go on, she says, I've got this. We crowd into the elevator as she begins hacking the terminal. She doesn't need to tell us what's happening. It's clear that the elevator won't descend all the way to the server. Unless someone stays behind to control it. Enemies incoming. They're almost on us. As I speak, I suddenly find myself leaping from the elevator and taking up position at number 21's side. Almost as if my body is out of my control. And this is where you play, you say, Rod. <laughs> Go beyond. Something is wrong. Something. I'll back up number 21, I cry. The rest of you. Take out that server. The doors close on my friends. The last thing I see is the face of my captain. She looks concerned, but then the door shut and she's no more. That was the last time I ever saw them. But it's all right. I'm gonna finish this one way or the other. The only sounds we hear are distant explosions and the rasp of number 21's breathing. Thank you, she whispers, for staying with me. I look at her eyes and see the telltale red of a logic virus infection. 
Oh, even in this novel, even in this in-game novel, the red in the eyes. I was right after all. I sigh softly as I draw my weapon. I've seen comrades infected before. That's why I couldn't leave her to die alone. The vaccine she gave Lily is already ineffective. The enemy has evolved. They studied number 21's patterns and developed a new resistance. No one can save her now. When the elevator reaches the server begins number 21 weekly, then I'll give you peace, I reply. The elevator moves ever lower, creating a countdown on number 21's life. How much time has passed? How much can possibly be left? Too long to wait, yet not long enough for regret. A massive explosion echoes in the distance as the hall slowly shakes. It's the final act of Lily and the others in the rear guard. They just overloaded their own fusion reactors. I think the genesis of the black boxes. The sound of our comrades' demise slowly fades from our ears. As it does, number 21 reaches up and slowly removes her goggles. I'm glad I got to meet you, she says. Her eyes are so red, but not completely. There's still a little of herself left. And while it's... Don't worry, I say. I'll be with you soon. She smiles as my words reach her ears. As soon as the elevator touches down, I fire a bullet into number 21's brain. I watch the thing that used to be her tumble to the ground. I stare at the gun I hold in trembling hands. I press it to my temple. This will end it all. The war, my meaningless existence, all of it. It will finally be over. Unforgivable. 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 Your comrades sacrifice themselves and fight to the last breath. They feel suffering. They feel sadness. They feel pain and terror. And yet you would surrender now? Unforgivable. The voice is a battlefield curse, telling those who survive to see their mission through no matter what. It's like a form of survivor's guilt. I scream at the top of my lungs and race down the hall. I'll show you. If you're gonna push me, I'll show you. You'll only be satisfied if it ends with more killing. I leap into the fray with weapons in both hands. Here I am. Here I am. Kill me. As I scream, an explosion suddenly rises up and sweeps everything away. A soft wind touches my cheek. I smell fire. I smell ash. The explosion in the server room was powerful enough to take out Mount Kala itself, reducing the once proud summit to a smoking crater. The machines immediately drop to the ground and stop moving. I look out over the scorched earth. Lily, number 16? Rose, number 2? Or any of you? I'm the only one left. The only one. 
I was alive because I had been afraid to die. I begin to giggle. It's a mad thing, crazed even to my own ears. I'll join you. Soon. He promised to join her soon. How could I have said such vain, laughable words? Such lies. I laugh. I stand in the smoke and the flames and laugh. Until I think my very throat will tear itself in two. I blink. Daylight drifts through the smoke. I've been standing here all night. My laughter finally depleted. I force myself to my feet. I'm the coward who stayed behind. The coward who lived. Now it's my job to carry on the will of those who fought at my side. Since I can't kill myself, I have to fight until someone does it for me. I'll endure every hardship. I'll kill every machine I find. This is my cross to bear. I walk slowly into the west, dragging my broken body along. And that is Anemone, a tortured ball of survivor's guilt. Jesus! I'm sorry I'm alive, but I will join you as soon as I finish some things up. It says A2 at the end of that. So that got pretty heavy pretty quick. And Anemone has nothing to say about all that. That's going to do it for now. Uh, we will get that book back to Pascal in a bit. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.